Whoa, water's up high today. How you liking this weather, huh? We call it low tide. <laughs> <laughs> we call it high tide. We call it the water's back. We call it cold. That must be a racing boat over there. It has a number on it. Careful, it might be slippery. We're windy today. So windy. Okay, baby, I got the rest of it. Yep. Okay. Still. It's a wet one out there today. Oh, wow. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Looks like you got some tools in your hands, baby. What do you got planned for today? Ready to start our project, honey. So you got a, <laughs> a staple gun and a screw gun. You're going to screw around and then you're going to staple it? Yep. <laughs> Whoa, that's dangerous right there. Watch out, this could be painful. Yep. Okay. You're ready, honey. All right. <laughs> okay, we're going to get at it. Get some work done here. Yep. Stay tuned. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome, Welcome back. back. I'm Priscilla. And I'm Rich. Together, Together we, we make DIY Nautical, Nautical Dream. Dream. What's up, guys? Welcome to GB. Oh, whoops! Sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong channel. Your That's channel. not us. We're not. We're not GB. Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> yeah, still. <laughs> we're welcome. Everybody's welcome now. Welcome on board. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I quit missing around. Yeah. Uh, Let's do what we're here to do. This week's episode, we are doing... What we're going to do, honey? Uh, I think we're going to make a mess. You're going to be varnishing your tick panels. Oh, yeah. You got that part. <laughs> and then making a new lenses retainer frame. Yep, right? we will make one more because we needed one more to finish that side. You're going to be preparing for new white paint. Yeah, we'll prep the surface and get it all cleaned up and wipe it down. And there's still more, just oh, yeah. fitting small tick panels. Yep, want to see if it fits. And then the scrap wood retainers. Oh yeah, this is my favorite part of the boat build, yep. the putting that scrap wood back in there. Mm -hmm. You're going to be <laughs> installing lower lenses fillers oh yeah those are always fun that's a very messy job and i'm gonna do the fiber glassing lenses cut out oh yeah here. i would like it if you did <laughs> so yeah we got you a lot of, even let me. <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> we got a lot going on on this episode but uh let's go ahead and get started and we will come back to you and tell you how we did yep. all right okay so the plan for today is to get this area all cleaned up wiped down with acetone clean all this off of here with the wire brush on the drill motor. This will make short work of it, but it'll be everywhere. It'll it'll make it all airborne. So just had to mask up and put on some safety glasses and we'll get it done. And then we can wipe all this down with acetone and paint it. We'll paint it up to about here. And then forward of this, we're gonna be doing some fiberglass and All right, go ahead and paint this area. You get the general idea of what's going on. It's not a very big area we're gonna be painting today, 
but we need to do it in steps like this so we can put the small pieces of wood back in place. Painting this does actually nothing for the boat or the surface. We're just doing it because we want it to just look nice. We're going to actually stick some foam insulation on here and we just want to paint everything with this paint because it makes for cleanup later easy if we ever had to clean anything up in here. In these holes here we'll probably inject some penetrating epoxy. It's very thin, it's almost like water. We'll inject that in there just to protect the wood that's in there because we know the wood in there is pretty well compromised with rot just from all the years that water's been getting in there. you get the idea of what's going on here. We're just trying to put a, a coat of paint on it and we'll build off of there. All right, so we got this painted. So that turned out all right. Gonna let that dry. And while we're at it, we went ahead and painted up here because we were gonna need to eventually anyways. So yeah, see, we got all the way down there. So that's prepped for the next piece of scrap wood that's going to go right up there and like the rotted piece we took off. So we're going to go ahead and let this all dry and then we'll come back to it later. I think our next project is going to be to get the wood down in here, the filler piece that we made, get that down in here, epoxy that into place, let it set up, and then we can start working on fiberglass and around the uh, window frame here, the cutout. And then we'll end up doing the same thing down there. So we went ahead and finally cleaned out all the rest of the rotted plywood that was in there. And it came out in pieces. It did not come out, you know, in like one big piece. It just came out in like wet, messy, rotted wood. You'll see in the picture here, that's what it came out like. Okay, so we cleaned all the, all the rotted wood that was down in here. That used to be the structure for something similar to this and now this will go down in there something like that as I drew a line on there and I'll trim it down to that level so that it's just basically flush with this surface here and then we'll just pour a ton of thick and epoxy down in there we'll put penetrating epoxy on this so this is all good and sealed all we're doing is trying to reinforce this back it's it's like secondary structure it's not it's not anything to worry about but we still want something in there because our screws are going to go in here and we need them to attach to something when we put the trim back on and that's really all it's for is just for the trim to have something to bite into all right so we're going to add a bunch of thickened epoxy in here and then we'll add our filler piece in there we'll see if we can have a little bit of good luck Anytime we're working with large quantities of epoxy in a small container, it's going to want to kick off fast. So the trick is to get it spread out as quickly as possible so we don't lose our working life with it. Whoa. Okay, we'll go ahead and put a couple of screws in here to kind of hold it in place. These are just to keep it in position while it's curing.
Okay, so all these screws are doing is just holding this piece of wood tied up against this, tied up against the fiberglass thin structure. And that's all we really want to do is you just want to bond this in place. So that's it. We just want to have something in there for the trim that's going to attach in here. We want something for that to, for the screws to grab into. That's all. So back here we're doing a test fit of this panel with this in place and everything fits really good. So we're happy with that. And then, uh, so what one of the next steps is gonna be is to pull this back off and you see the gap that's back here. That's a pretty substantial air gap back there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, foam, high density foam insulation. We're gonna line it back here and back here. And eventually it'll go all the way all the way down and what, what we're going to do there is try to eliminate a little bit of condensation from forming back there we did that the same thing on the other side of the boat and it turned out really nice the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take this off right here and on the back side we're going to coat it with penetrating epoxy and that'll seal the back side of this so that moisture cannot get into the teak panel from the back side and start rotting it because that's hidden damage. You won't see it until it becomes too late. So we'll seal the back side and we're gonna put a couple more coats of varnish on the front side, but we just wanna do a check fit, make sure everything goes in together. So that's a little bit of progress in the reassembly stage. And we also have our new structure. You can see it's kind of laying in there. We have that epoxied into place because if you remember, this was all rotted. So we rebuilt that, basically inset some new plywood and we epoxy coated it so it won't soak up any moisture and then we just used thick and epoxy and we dropped it in here and we got it clamped into place and we have a screw here and a screw over here and there's a screw there holding everything just for alignment purposes our next one of our next steps we want to do is start fiberglass in this building this structure back up with the fiberglass once that's done then we'll be able to start putting our window frame our new piece of window frame that we made We'll be able to put that back in so it's a slow go this is going to take a while it didn't go fast on the other side it's not going to go fast on this side a little bit at a time the paint's still a little tacky on this but it's time to get this freshly painted piece of scrap wood reinstalled all right let's see if this fits now well that went in let's see about here a snug fit one of these simple jobs that should go relatively easy put a little pressure on that one seems like it's in I'm worried about breaking it off like we did before but yeah so that's that's in all right so now we got the panel and we'll show the only purpose of this piece of plywood the only purpose of this right here is basically it only has two jobs one is it's going to hold this in place like a retainer okay all right so we got that in so i like to use this I like to use this as an all, like an alignment guide. This little piece right here. Okay, so that's that. This only has one coat of varnish on it. We're still gonna have to, we're gonna have to uh, fine sand it and then varnish it like two more times. But right now we're just fitting it up here, making sure we're kind of just checking our work. The vinyl, which is right up here, will come over here and it'll staple. It's going to staple right along the edge here of this. And that's only two purposes of this. To hold this in place and for the vinyl to attach to. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out pieces of insulation to fit back here. Because you can see the gap. It's pretty sizable. We want to fill that up a little bit. It helps prevent the condensation from forming back there. It gives it kind of a 
just fills that air air gap up a little bit because everywhere I've noticed especially when it's cold outside if there's nothing insulating here this tends to get moisture on it and it'll start to condense back there and over time that just turns into moisture and drips and soaks into the wood so we're trying to prevent that the other thing we're going to do is we'll take this back off on the back side we're going to coat it with penetrating epoxy stuff works really good you'll hear me mention it a lot because we're using it a lot we really like it and so we'll use it on the back side of all of our teak panels for here and what that does is it prevents these from absorbing any moisture over long term and so it helps kind of it's going to help prevent any kind of rot from happening this is just being the test fit um this turned out really good considering we made it off of that rotted piece it was really flimsy and i wasn't sure if we were cutting it right but uh you can see here it's a pretty tight pretty tight fit so that's good how tight oh it's tight you know that kind of tight but anyways it's pretty tight and then it goes all the way down there and so what we'll do next is we'll we'll pull this off we'll coat it with penetrating epoxy and then we'll paint it up on the back side. We'll paint it with the white paint, everything like that. We're gonna get it all sealed really good. And then we'll be able to put this back up and permanently mount it as well. We still have to put our frames in here. We still have to lay the fiberglass to, to strengthen up the structure back here. Then the frames, same thing here. We still have to replace all the rotted wood that's in here. Fiberglass around the ridge here and put our frame on. So. Once we do all those things, hopefully we'll have all that ready to go and we can put our teak panel back on with some nice insulation back here. And then long term, once this is back together, this nice quality piece of high-end plastic. Yeah, this is uh, what you call white teak. You can see they did a really fine job here. Straight. Oh yeah, straight. Very precise fit. You got all kinds of just whoop de doos going all over the place. Anyways. This was somebody's band-aid because they had rotted plywood under there just like that from all the leaks going on up here. So we're going to fix that. We're going to put teak over here like we did on the other side. And this side will be as beautiful as it is over there. We'll put new lights in here. And we'll wrap this up. And we'll have to put new teak. We'll put a teak panel under here also. And then, uh, yeah, this area will be nice and beautiful. So that's the plan. It's a lot of steps. It's, it's not hard work. It's just a lot of steps that have to go on in the right sequence. Here we are in the process of cutting out the second window frame, the one below it here. We'll cut the centerpiece out here. We're just going to do a rough cut on it. And then we'll router it out to do a final match cut with the router. And then we'll have two new window frames. Yeah, we just cut out here, cut out to here. Then I'll flip this around and we'll cut back up the rest of this. And eventually we'll have two of these duplicates. And then we'll epoxy coat these with penetrating epoxy so they won't rot. Water won't get into these and cause them to warp or delaminate or anything over time. Because they're going to be in a very wet environment. So we want to make sure they're water, they're sealed from water. Anyways, I'll show you more when we're done here, but just want to kind of give you the idea how we're making these. All right, so we're going to get ready to coat this with penetrating epoxy. See, it just drips off like water. See that? That's what we want. The thinner, the better we want it to get into the wood and then we're just going to paint it on with this brush and we don't want to be sparing when we put this on we want it to get into the wood but you do want to have like paper towels or plastic or something down below because this is going to drip all over the place Inside the wood grain is the most important area because this is where the window water is going to pool up and settle. And 
the exposed edge grains are the areas we want to get the most penetration on, the most protection on, because that's the easiest way for the water to get in, moisture to get into this, this plywood. All right, so we'll just go ahead and let that set up about an hour or two and it will be good to go. Okay, so now this is cured and set up and now we have a nice water moisture proof window lens retainer frame. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and wet out this fiberglass cloth here. And then once it's wetted out, saturated really good, we're gonna go ahead and apply it around the window frame area. Get the stir stick out of the way. So I have two really long strips. I'm gonna go ahead and wet these out first because those are gonna be the most difficult to get up there on the window frame. All right, here's the fun part. And this, uh, this video I'm doing here is not intended to teach anyone how to fiberglass. That's not the intention here. I'm not trying to teach anybody how to fiberglass. All I'm trying to do is show you what we're doing here. So. So all I'm doing is using my fingers to kind of work it into place here. Because I don't want it too high. I don't want it into the radius. Because then that's going to make my radius up here a little too thick. And then we're going to have problems fitting the frame up in that corner. I think that's good for that. All right, we waited out a couple more pieces of fiberglass. I think we'll call that good. So all we're doing is adding fiberglass around this cutout right here. Just trying to give you the idea so you can see what was going on here. And we did the same thing over here. See, this is all set up. We thicken this up, this structure up with some fiberglass. And the next thing we'll do is we'll cut this. We'll trim it with the Dremel tool, we'll grind that down so it's flush with the original cutout. And we'll do the same thing over there. But for now, we'll let that cure. So the next step after that cures is to trim them out. And then we'll fit our frame, our, t our wood frame. We'll fit this up in there. And we'll use a couple of temporary fasteners to hold it into place. Same thing in that spot there. So we'll hold those into place with temporary fasteners. Uh, we'll fit everything up with the teak panel in place so we know they're, everything's all in alignment really good. So all the cutouts match. Temporary fasten all that. And then we'll epoxy those frames into place up here as well. So everything's got a good serious epoxy bond. No more moisture is gonna get into the wood. Moisture is not going to damage anything over there anymore. So. Like I said, we've done the same thing on this side right here. Right here, so we did the same thing over here and this turned out good. And up there as well. And you can even see a little bit of the butyl tape showing through on the outside that just needs to be trimmed away. And that's what we did, we bedded these, these windows, we bedded in with butyl tape and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side over there. And we just ran the fasteners down really slow over a period of a couple weeks 
to get a really good squeeze out. So we know that there's a nice cushion behind the, the lens up here, this part right here, of butyl tape, and it's not going to start to leak anytime soon. We'll get this side over here. This side will match here eventually, so this is just part of the process. The other side looked just as bad. We'll get there. We'll show you step by step what we're doing. Um, we laid a lot of fiberglass here on this window frame and went all the way around the perimeter of it. We also filled in this channel area down here and this is totally watertight now. And so what we did here is we went ahead and filled this in with thickened epoxy until it just wouldn't take anymore. And we want to make sure there's no voids in this so water cannot get down in here. These windows will leak at some point or they'll get condensation on them and the water will pool down here. And we just don't want it to get into that wood that we put in down here. We don't ever want this to rot again. So it works on the other side really well. So we're doing the same thing we did over there because we had good experience with it. I'll go ahead and get some shots of this so you guys can see what I'm talking about a little bit closer up. That turned out good. This, this actually kicked off. It's very nice and nice and solid now and uh yeah it's ready for trimming so that's good okay so here we are showing the trim the uh the edges here where we put the fiberglass on here yesterday and it all set up really well that's good we're going to trim all this to fit the cutout here which is going to make a huge fiberglass mess but it's a necessary evil we have to do it to get to where we want to be so but yeah so here's the area that i, I was talking about where i filled in all the rotted area and this is all now thick and epoxy in here so anyways it turned out really good we got thick and epoxy over the top of the plywood and we got a little bit of plywood right here it's a little high we're probably gonna trim this down and put a little epoxy over the top of it or we'll trim the bottom bottom of the window frame to fit this and throw some thick and epoxy over the top of all that but either way this has already been sealed with uh, penetrating epoxy so water's not going to get in there anyways but just to be on the safe side we'll take a couple extra steps yeah this turned out really good and now this is all rock solid where before i if you look back in some of our uh, previous shots of this area this was all gone there was nothing here at all nothing backing this up so now we have structure in there again something for the screws to fasten into when we're attaching the trim the uh, teak trim panels and all that other stuff that's going to go on the outer so yeah and we did the same thing as well on this side here this is all filled in and this was all rotted before too and now it's all nice and solid we also have to trim this cut out also we got our work cut out for us but once once this is all trimmed up then we're ready for the next step so this is going to go up against there and we'll we'll epoxy that into place same thing down there we'll have another one going in down there we'll epoxy those we'll epoxy those in place and then we'll be ready to be ready to install some window window lenses we'll be ready to install some of those here i know it doesn't look like a lot but that's a lot of that's a lot of steps to get that far so a lot of processes that have to happen. One of the other things I noticed this morning, I saw a couple water drips. And so I put my finger up back here and there's lots of condensation going on up here. And uh, so you can see, oh, anyways, there was water dripping here this morning. And so there's a big, I'll show you real quick. It's not gonna be pretty, but if you look where my fingers are at right here, this area here is all wet from condensation just because it got really cold out last night and so there's a big pocket in here and so when we put the new hatch cutout frame that we're going to make still we haven't made yet but we got to replace this when we put that new frame in here i'll fill that void with some uh foam insulation or something so that we can stop that condensation because yeah this is just all water up here it's all wet from condensation and it wasn't even really that cold last night but the thing that uh tipped me off was i saw a drip here and then i saw water on the couch so i went straight up 
and it took me to right here and then I put my finger up here and sure enough there's there's water on top of that nice thing is is we totally sealed this so we don't have to worry about water getting in here into this piece of wood but we don't want it dripping down or running down the back side of the panels and stuff because the water won't just disappear it'll it'll continue down until it gets to somewhere where it's going to puddle so we got to eliminate that any chance we can on the boat any place any location we find it when we see those areas that happen to develop moisture and it turns into drips and then turns into puddles and then turns into rotted something somewhere down the way um we want to stop that everywhere we can so here we're looking at the back side of the new teak panel you see how shiny it is we coated that really well with penetrating epoxy it has about two coats of penetrating epoxy on it so moisture is not going to get in there and rot it from the back side and now we're ready to do the front side we're ready to add our lovely first coats of varnish to it this is kind of funny this is how you can tell we're a little bit of a low budget operation we're going to get every last drop out of that can of varnish now i'd say that's getting our money's worth out of using that can uh, i wouldn't normally go that that low in the can but it's all i had and i don't want to stop so i just had to be really careful not to get any uh, chunks on the product all right so here we are first coat of varnish on the wood new panel we just made Looking pretty good, huh? Oh man, gotta get that off. Yeah, so we'll get a bunch of bugs landing on this probably before it gets dark. But yeah, turned out pretty good. It's first coat, so it's not nothing major. We'll sand it and reapply a couple more coats before we get a chance to install this back on the boat. But so far, so good. Well, that right there is the look we're going for. We just love that color, the varnish. Love it. Look how it looks on the teak like that. That's exactly what we wanted. We keep saying this, but uh, we feel like we're getting pretty good at making these panels, putting the varnish on them, making them look beautiful. It's going to look really nice once it's installed back in the boat. Okay, so we'll come back, guys. Yep, we're back. We had lots of fun uh, varnishing the teak that panel. Was a lot of work for him. Yeah, getting that first layer of varnish is always nice and fun. Makes it really show the color, and and uh, it's probably one of my favorite things to do is when we get to put that first coat of varnish on. But um, we did the white paint up there. We got that nice, uh, and and there's no structural reason. There's no it, it could do without it, right? But we do that just so that we know that later on down the road, should we get back in there again, it gives us a good easy indicator if you've seen water trails running down or anything like that but most people probably just say no don't do it it's an extra step right yeah but it and takes... it's more it's more work yeah it's more work <laughs> takes a little more time but in the end we got plenty of time so we're just going to go ahead and keep doing that sort of thing uh we test fitted the small little teak panel and it seems like that's a good fit so we're happy about that and we we're able to go ahead and get that second uh wood window lens retainer frame made so that turned out pretty good as well so we're done making those we should not have to make any more of those for this boat so we are you should, sure i hope so man i think we're good on that <laughs> it's not an install i'm particularly fond of i think it could have been engineered better but we're just going to go with what what they had before so the wood fillers that go below the large window lenses all those are is for some kind of secondary structure for the teak panels to fasten into in the, the outer teak trim so it's really not critical, but we want new wood in there for something for the screws to grip to and all that sort of thing. So it was totally rotted. We got that out and gooped in the new stuff with lots of thick and epoxy and what a mess. But it's in there, so that we don't have to worry about that. It's another thing we will not have to do again. And then so we went ahead and fiberglassed around the uh, large lens cutouts. And all that is to do is to thicken up the structure just a tiny bit. It gives it a little bit more strength in strength, that area yeah. and um you know because that's a large cutout in that thin fiberglass structure so anyways we feel better about it and what a mess that was we always do yeah so we're making progress uh this is where we get really bogged down is on in all these little details but we don't want to skip them because then that's skipping on quality and we don't want to skip on quality so we have the time we'll do it right and yeah. get it done it's slowly but surely yeah so anyways, we hope you really enjoy this episode. If you're into this sort of DIY, fix-it-yourself type of stuff, then uh, the, we're the channel for you guys because yes. we have a lot coming up. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you are not subscribed yet, please, please subscribe. subscribe. Down right below. down below there. Somewhere there's a button to subscribe. Oh. <laughs> 
And just, you know, on the whole subscriber topic, we really appreciate it. Our goal is to, our primary goal is to hit a thousand subscribers. And I believe right now we are just about at 700. So yeah. we it really. It will be a long journey. Yeah, it's a long journey <laughs> to get to a thousand, but we've earned it. And we couldn't do it without you guys. Each and every one of you that subscribe we and really watch our channel. It. We couldn't do it without you. We don't forget you. And if you want to talk with us, our email is in the notes. And we'd be happy to get to know you. If you want to talk with us and you want to meet us or whatever. Right. Have some coffee or whatever. Yeah. We talk are about both. open. Yeah. <laughs> we're about it. You know, we're all, we're very open and we're. Minded. We're... <laughs> <laughs> all right. So anyways, uh, we'll wrap it up. And we just really appreciate everybody that. Uh, reaches out to us throughout the week and comments on our videos really happy with that so <laughs> thanks for joining along on our journey and we're happy to have all the new subscribers and all the longtime subscribers as well so thank you to all of you all right see you guys next episode yep see ya bye. have a good one bye dang if i only hit record man i think you did okay <laughs>so yeah we just really want to say thanks to all of our longtime subscribers and oh man did you record Dang. it man i thought you were going to push the button this time <laughs> is it on can you see the red light i did it i think i did oh okay man we can't that was a lot of footage to shoot without hitting the button here we'll do it it's already good to yep. go. hang on <laughs> okay one to ready man how's that Are we gonna put that down? Oh, I miss it. Is it cutting? Yeah, now? that's fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. I think I forgot to hit record. <laughs> like always. Oh, man. Is it recording? No. I think you did, or maybe not. <laughs> did we record it? Hang on, no, 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 no. <laughs>